this is my favorite way to take photos and it is by far the most difficult way to take photos at night in the rain. So we started out on the train and there's a particular clip that I got, I think four or maybe five years ago now, that I've been trying to recreate for so long. It was this long clip coming into Shinjuku Station with another train and you could see through the windows. And I got one that is close, not quite as good, um, but I did a full three minutes of it. So if you want to go and watch that clip completely uncut, I'll leave a link down below um, because, man, that was a fun one. Oh, it is noisy, isn't it? Rocking your yellow. I am. I'm the camera holder. <laughs> the pal. Okay, so I'm starting off by just staying dry for the moment. Just want to set the agenda of what we're up to. I'm looking to get some night photography in the rain, all the reflections, using the new 56mm 1.2, which is finally weather sealed. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I never picked up that lens previously, but now the Mark II is a weather resistant lens. You know that by the WR on the name. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to use it. And all my photos, by the way, will be edited with my Urban Chrome presets, the link of which is in the description below. It's actually raining quite hard, so we'll see how it goes. But this is not my first rodeo. being a bit ambitious using the X-T5 and the 56mm. It's actually raining way more than I expected. So I'm just on the one, just the X-H2S and 16-55 2.8 and uh, just switching between photo and video. I am having to put the microphone away though. That's the only weak point in the system for water because uh, the microphones of course aren't weather sealed. But this X-H2S has honestly been my absolute favorite camera in terms of switching for photo and video. It's the first time it really works and I love it. I'm loving this camera so, so much. This camera I can feel is becoming a significant workhorse for me. Just like my X-H1, I am drawn to this camera and it is worth it. I am loving it so much. It's just, it's reliable. I think that's one of the most satisfying things about a camera is when you can trust it. And uh, this one, I'm putting a lot of trust into it and I'm loving it.
You know, this is actually the first time being back in Shinjuku since uh, the last time we were in Japan, a few years back. And, you know, I've been in Japan for well over a month now. Um, it's funny because this area is always probably the most populated area of Tokyo, and I just haven't come across a path. And now, since being here, we've just gone down Omoi Yokocho, which is probably the most over photographed part of Tokyo. But you know what? It's just a lot of fun. There's so much fun, there's so much activity happening there, just smell wise as well. There's a, a lot of, um, you know, just good sensory experiences happening. So even though it is one of the most over photographed and over touristy areas, I love it. It's just, it's great. And uh, it's seasonal as well. So at the moment they got the autumn colors up, uh, but it changes throughout the year. My feet are so wet though. <laughs> These are supposed to be waterproof, Adidas. just how much is raining. I <laughs> mean, that doesn't say how much is raining. <laughs> there is actually quite a nice reflection there. my golf jacket and my golf trousers and luckily the water's just running off but um, somehow it's just it, it's just raining up you don't even need a pro mist filter on today no, no. <laughs> I actually I did think I was gonna put my cine bloom on um, but the amount of water and mist that's on this lens it's uh, it's just hazing everything uh, which is quite nice but it is also you just got to stay on top of it, keep wiping it. This is what I said when it's it's so difficult, but the results, when you get good ones, they are worth it. But you just have to persevere. It's it's tricky, but it's hard. Okay, it's FaceTiming in the rain. Not gonna lie, <laughs> we're, we're kind of we're kind of just lemons at the moment. We're uh, stood around. It's nice people watching, um, but uh, it it just will not let up. It's raining so much more than than I can even demonstrate on camera. Um, but we're persevering. Just don't really know where to go. <laughs> I think uh, at some point we're going to need to find some food uh, and some drinks, um, maybe warm up a little bit. I am a little bit worried though that what usually happens when we do that is we sort of lose momentum and uh, you don't want to go out again afterwards. So I'm thinking that we should stick around for a little bit longer and then find some food. I've got a seamless procedure, but today I think it's the experience that everyone else has. Join. It's definitely usually easier to browse on the phone than it is on the camera. And then it comes. 
comes up. And then we just choose the memory card. So I'm on memory card one. Yeah, look for the vertical ones, which also have the color applied, so it's kind of easy to spot. And import. Ignore that. That is always hideously wrong. Do you remember when this happened in New Zealand where the viewfinder fogged up? Well, funnily enough, we went for dinner and got some drinks and we've come out and it stopped raining. <laughs> um, but I think we're actually both kind of shivering a little bit uh, because my feet are soaking wet. Um, but you know what? I had a good time getting some photos. I did manage to switch back to the 56mm 1.2. Um, yeah, which is pretty great. All the photos that you've seen throughout this video, they've been edited with my Urban Chrome sets, both Volume 1 and Volume 2. I think I'm mainly using Volume 2, uh, in particular the Night Pop and the Static Pop. Uh, those presets just seem to work really well for me uh, in these types of environments. My viewfinder has fogged up and this has happened <laughs> a few times before. The last time this happened was on an X-T2 in New Zealand and uh, I think it just took a little bit of time to just acclimatize and just re-sort of sort itself out. Um, that was an issue with the waterfall. That camera did actually end up breaking, but I have faith and I have trust that the camera is still going to be fine. Uh, it's just a matter of temperature changes, a lot of moisture, and going into a warm place. Uh, it's just, yeah, a little bit tricky to deal with. So I know there are those dehumidifier cupboards, like fridge looking devices. You see them in Yodabashi. They're like, I think they're about 400 pounds or something. Um, and some people do store their cameras in those just to keep them in like perfect working condition. I don't have the space for that, but I'm interested to know how they work and if that's for this type of thing. Um, but anyways, it's kind of made my camera a little bit... Uh, I think it scored. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Japan are playing football this evening. And uh, Sorry. I think they might have just scored. <laughs> um, yeah, so this viewfinder is uh, is kind of rendered my camera a little bit useless for the moment. Of course, I can still use the screen, but you know, it's fine. Um, anyway, video is coming up on the channel uh, that I think you're going to really enjoy. We've got some nature stuff. Uh, so we filmed a couple of hikes recently, one of which was up a mountain with Chris Broad. Kind of tricked Jay. I was like, do you want to go for a little walk? He was like, oh yes. And it's like a mountain that takes five hours. <laughs> with literally no introduction of what was happening. He was like, do you want to come for a walk? And uh, it turns out it was up a mountain, actually climbing a mountain. <laughs> oh. uh, and then another one hikes through uh, some of the western areas of Tokyo. Um, got some great autumn colours. Filmed a lot lately. I think you do really enjoy the videos on the channel. And uh, I hope you enjoy this one and we'll catch you in the next one super soon. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.